Hi again. I just wanted to make a quick video before I uh, go too much into building the list and putting everything together. There was an idea that I had with these guys with these phosphorus. One of the things I really love about them is their masks that some of them have. You see this photograph here of a mortar trooper with his mask. I really love it. And about half of the range have masks on, half of the range don't. They show their beautiful moustaches. I would really like to have my whole range with masks on because it really fits the uh, fits the meta that I'm going for. So what I'm going to try and do is uh, what I've got here are some uh, bearskin visor heads from Anvil Industries, and I'm just going to see if I can make one of these masks on here fit on my phosphorine trooper now. I could just whip the head off and just replace the whole head, but I'm I'm actually really keen on how these Foster and hats are modelled. I just think they they just look a bit better sitting around the back. They fit really well with the model. So before I start whipping heads off, there's a couple of great videos on head swaps online as well that you can look up. I'll pop a link in the comments as well for a couple of the guys who've done this. I'm just going to see if we can remove enough of the face to fit this small piece of mask. I might have to remove some of the masks and more of the mask as well. But I've just managed to cut this off one of these anvil heads. So I'm just gonna try and grind away some of the some of the model itself and see if my cheap blunt tool will actually get rid of enough face to do this. So it's starting to just take the edge of the face off. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and just use a file and just see if using a file to get the first part of the face off is any more successful. What I really don't want to do is take off any of the other details though because the, uh, there's a really tight gap here that we're working in. We've got the, um, the las gun, the shoulder pad, the front of the hat to worry about. I'm just going to try and eat away just enough of this to see if we can get this mask in place. We've really started eating away at the face now. Um, but what I want to do is just see, lining the mask up, how much more of this needs to come off. So the mask in place, actually what we need to do is we still need to dig quite a lot deeper into this, into this face. I'm just gonna see if I've got a bit that's gonna be a bit more suitable. The moral of this story is to have really good grinding bits rather than the cheap tip that I've picked up here. But we'll see how we get on. So we've really got to go quite a lot deeper into this to get this to fit. I'm going to try and take a little bit more off the mask itself, but I've really got to try and get in and get more of this guy's face off. I think investing in a slightly heavier duty uh, modelling tool would be a really good idea. So what we're doing at the moment is we're just eating away at the inside of the mask using uh, a round file. So just try and fit the profile of what's left of this guy's face a bit better. So he'll actually start sitting in there 
I think we're getting there with it. I think we just need to be able to nudge a little bit more off the edges of this mask so he fits into the cavity really nicely. But actually, it's not going too bad. I'm just going to nip a bit off the top of his head. It fits underneath his hat quite well. So if we check out our chaps here, actually, the masks are quite recessed underneath the hats. So we need to just try and eat away at that a little bit more. Yeah, we are very nearly there, I think, with this guy. We're getting his mask in place. It's just still a little big around the top. We've just got to nip in the top corners, so he'll sit in there. Sit in there slightly better. Okay, so that is about right, I think. The mask sits quite well, looks kind of natural. They're not quite as nice as the masks that we have on the original models, but actually, they're not horrific either. They don't have quite such a protrusion at the front, which is a shame, but I think they could work quite well, actually. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to glue him up, I'm going to glue him in place. I'm going to get a little bit of liquid green stuff. We're going to just run that around the outside of this mask just to fill the gaps nicely. And then I think we're going to give him a coat of black and see how he turns out. So just before we put any green stuff on, I'm just going to take a photograph for a comparison. So we've just put a layer of liquid green stuff on the outside of the mask. We've left the area underneath the bottom of the mask here, just around the bottom here, because what I'd actually quite like to do is leave that as the gap that you would naturally have underneath a mask like this. I'm going to grab a tiny little bit of water now, and what I just want to try and do is just smooth these edges out a little tiny bit with some water that will hopefully make it seem like the mask is set more underneath the hat there we go so try and brush some of this away from the the actual gas mask itself We want quite a natural finish on this. Try and put a couple of little 
furrows around the edge to make it all blend in better. And there we go. And there we have our finished masked phosphorin trooper just with a mask put on instead of a funky moustache. So <laughs> that's quite a long process but it'll get quicker as we go. Uh, the models are all quite different. I mean the guy, one of the models with the bionic eye who's aiming down the sights of his gun is going to be very difficult to convert his face but I think we'll be able to grind away enough of his face and then cut a mask in but we'll take photographs of every single one that we do along the way. We'll wait for him to all dry up, we'll give him a coat of black and then we'll have another look and see how he looks. So I've just got back from giving a little coat of spray paint to this guy. Uh, I think he looks really good. If we have a look down on the other camera, you can see that the mask sits really well, everything's in proportion. Seems like that's actually quite a good job. This process will become way faster the more that I do it. Every single time it will take less and less time and then it will just become part of the modelling process. With the number of models that I'm having in the army of these metal firstborns, which is about 60 or 70 in all, half of them will need this doing. So it's going to be, if I can get it down to maybe five, six minutes a model, it's going to be you know, a day's work, get all of them done, they'll look really cool and they'll really fit with the theme um, and if we just go in the focus will just drop out ever so slightly but you can see the little bit of liquid green stuff has just made everything mould in and blend in really well together and uh, yeah I think he looks really cool when we have a little comparison to his mate who is here so you can see actually he's done alright. It also helps just increase the potential of the range if I did ever want to have a larger army with a whole load of different variations this is just another modelling option to try and bring that up. Just incidentally in the last um, couple of weeks I've seen eBay going crazy for these Vostroin troopers. There was a I bought my bits from Italy and a few bits on the auction site but there was a smaller lot than this it was about uh, six, squad worth, six squads worth and a command squad it went for about 700 quid which is insane but great if you're you know if you're keen to collect um, certainly thankfully I didn't pay anywhere near that for this much larger lot um, but yeah, it was just it was just a bit terrifying. But good to see that these models are really starting to to pick up again in the last the last couple of weeks. Um, so anyway, the next video is going to be about building the list and making sure that we've got the right models we need for the job, and then getting rid of anything that we don't need as well, leaving some flexibility. Thanks very much for watching. See you again.